Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today I want to make a colored pencil. Now these are a much harder lead than normal. They don't wipe off quite as easily as crayon and they make them a little bit more fun. And uh, is it better to make your own pencils? No, it is much cheaper and easier to go and buy them and you'll get just as good a quality, but I like making my own. So let's actually dive in and take a look at how to make a colored pencil. A pencil made from Aspen. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. Um, I, I, I just wanted to make a pencil because, well, I've wanted to make a pencil and it's been on my list for, what, three years now? I think I bought the leads that long ago and I, I bought colored pencil leads, but I didn't want the regular soft pencil. I wanted the harder ones because those are harder to find regularly or you spend a good chunk on them. Whereas the regular soft ones I can buy just about anywhere. So for this, I'm just going to cut them to approximately the length of a pencil. How long is that? Uh, I don't know. I just grabbed a pencil and said it was about that long and, and marked them at that. So I'm cutting off two blocks. That's enough to make a dozen pencils. And then we need to smooth them all down and plane out a whole bunch of pencil halves out of this because we need to end up making two halves to sandwich the lead between. So we're going to smooth down one side, or smooth down both edges on this, and that will give us something we can mark off of so we can mark the half of a thickness of a pencil um, actually no we're actually we're going to resaw this down to the thickness of a pencil point to point uh, so if a pencil has six sides the two opposing corners that dimension is the thickness that I want which is right about a half of the thickness of a three-quarter inch board minus the saw curve so we're going to resaw this down and this is a great way to practice resawing. If you haven't done this for a while, a small thing like this is actually relatively easy. And uh, being able to stay on that line and track it all the way down, it's a great skill to learn, and this is a good place to do it. So we're left with a rough sawn edge and a smooth edge. And I'm going to plane the rough sawn marks off of the, uh, off of the other side so that we have two smooth edges on either edge of these. And then once we have these smoothed down to the touch on both sides, then I also need to smooth the edges of them as well as the sides. And this is because now we're going to be referencing off of the edge. We need to mark in half the thickness of a pencil. And this is actually half the thickness of flat side to flat side. So if you measure the pencil not point to point but flat to flat, half of that is what we're marking it to right here. And because I have one side trimmed and the other side, uh, I have two sides smoothed, I can mark in from either side, cut them. And then after cutting them, then I can mark in from either side and cut them again and repeat uh, 24 times to make 12 pencils. And here I'm going to be cutting it uh, flat down the face. Uh, I thought about ripping it down um, long ways, but the problem with ripping it down long ways is if there's any problem with a saw, you're going to splinter it and break the piece off. So I find it actually a little easier to cut in this way. It's a little more tedious, but it'll give you a better result and a little bit more practiced. And there we have one half of a pencil. Then we can cut the other side off and get the other half of one pencil. Yes, this is a lot of work to make a set of 12. And uh, I, I was expecting to be able to, to make all 12 in one day, and I probably could have without a problem. Um, but I wanted to get the video out on time, and so that meant Luke had to come out. Now I'm actually going to be putting a line down the middle of each of these halves, and I need to cut a recess for the lead to fit into. And I went about this a whole bunch of different ways with like a saw curve and things like that, and then I thought, wait a second, I'm a hand tool woodworker. Let's just grab a gouge and run it down. So I actually got a V-tool with a bit of a rounded tip on it and carefully went along to draw my first line. And then after that, we could very quickly freehand this. And I ended up cutting each half of this in you know, 15, 20 seconds each. So this part went really fast and was incredibly enjoyable because these little cur cute curls are, are phenomenal. And then I put the lead in there and check how deep it went. And that let me know when I got down to depth. And then I could sandwich the two pieces with the lead in between and make sure that the, the two faces touched. Um, anywhere that they aren't touching, you need to fill that gap with glue. Um, and so I tried to make them fairly tight without much issue. Um, so that when I squeezed it down, it would actually compress the wood a bit. And to squeeze it down, I'm just going to use a bunch of squeeze clamps. They actually had uh, plenty of pressure, pressure for this small surface because of the... The, the poundage that they put on is rather significant and being able to put it on such a small area means a very high PSI connection. So set them on those, leave them overnight, and then we can come back and clean this up. One pencil, while we're doing it, we can make the other 11. 
<laughs> so now we have a very rough square rod that has a different dimension um, either direction because these, the pencil actually has slightly different directions, uh, different dimensions. So I want to smooth out the two faces that don't have any glue, and then we can rotate it and smooth off the two faces that do have glue. And for this, I find it much easier just to grab a chisel and plane off the glue like that, and then I can bring the plane in and get down into it. Not to mention, this is incredibly fun to pull off these little curls with just a chisel. Yeah, <laughs> this, uh, this is enjoyable. <laughs> now I thought I'd um, smooth off the tip just to check it and make sure everything was on good on there. And then I want to mark out where the corner of the pencil, so one corner to one corner uh, across the, the, the shape. And I'm going to mark that with a pencil because of course you cannot make a pencil without a pencil. <laughs> and then I'm going to eyeball this. Now that sounds scary, but after you've done one, maybe two pencils, this actually becomes really, really easy just to eyeball it and put in that angle. And so I have that line there and I can go close to the line on one side and then rotate it one sixth of the way around and then plane it down to the line until the line just disappears. So you can watch the line here and then I'm gonna check it and I'm gonna notice that I'm a little bit, I need a little bit more in the middle. I was hitting a lot at the beginning and the end. And then once I got the middle, then we can plane it until the line just mm, disappears, just like that. And then we just do the other four sides that need to be planed down until eventually we have a six sided shape. And uh, this this went far, far quicker than I expected. I was expecting this to be the, the long sticker of being, you know, five, six minutes per pencil, per, per pencil. And in the end, it was under a minute per pencil. This actually went incredibly fast. And there it is. I mean, they don't have to be perfectly perfect, but the more you do it, the easier they become. And uh, the last one I did actually came out really, really well. And you can test them by rolling them on there, make sure that they stop, make sure that they feel good, and there's nothing in the bouncing or any side that feels weird. And that's cool pencil right there. The rest of it is just for the fun of it. Now I was trying to figure out some way to green the wood and I was thinking about putting them in a vacuum chamber and sucking the dye into the wood or just using a wood dye. But then I thought, you know, I'm going to play around with the epoxy. And this was more or less an experiment for me. I don't think I would do the epoxy in the future other than the fact it actually left it with a pretty nice finish on there. And I tried one green dye, uh, but this one that I ordered just didn't have what I wanted it to be. Um, so I actually went up and tried a different dye, and this one was a little bit thicker um, color. And so I did a little bit in there just to test it, and it was turning it the color I was looking for, so then I could add more because I wanted it to be a nice thick color. And looking at it, I probably should have added a little bit more than that even um, because I, I wanted it to, to coat it and be a little bit darker green than what I got in the end. Uh, this, this was about the color I was wanting, but with how thin it is on the pencil, it didn't end up being quite that dark. Now I ran out of... Um, I ran out of brushes to brush the epoxy on. So, oops, um, oh well. Um, gloves work really well, actually. And then I wanted to let it hang, but I didn't want to sit on there because then the epoxy would leave the marks from the cup. So I grabbed a little squeeze clamp and tied a string onto it so that I could clamp the tip of the pencil, which doesn't need any epoxy on it, and then hang it so that it would drip off into the cup. And this actually worked really, really well. I was very happy with it. It gave it a relatively smooth color from one end to the other. And of course, with an artisan pencil, you have to do an artisan sharpening. You can't just stick that in a round sharpener and turn a uh, six-sided shape into a round tip. No, we must trim it off. And uh, I actually like the, the look and feel of that. Does it need to? No. Um, it's just kind of a nice thing. Scrape it down, make it feel good, and take it for a test run. And the, the, the harder lead on this really gives you a finer control on the color you apply to the paper. And so you can see some of these are very, very light and some of them are very, very dark. Um, the, the darker green on there is actually another pencil I have. Uh, but this one, I'm, I'm coloring it in with a very, very light touch and I can get a really good control. And then you put a little bit more pressure onto it and you can get it darker and darker. And so I, I kind of like the, the lighter lead on there. Makes it fairly easy. But yeah, that's one pencil done. Now I need to make more. Oh, stink. I'm going to need some other <laughs> colors. Yeah, I really like these. I'm very happy, and I'm looking forward to finishing the set and having lots more for the future. So I hope you like them too.
So there you have it, a colored pencil. Now I need to make some more. And as you can see, I'm in the process of making um, several more. I'm gonna make an entire set. Um, I just haven't quite gotten there yet. I need to uh, do some more, but I got enough to get a video out today and I hope you like that. If you did like this video or would like to see more like it, please let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, <laughs> all those things that YouTube puts on there. They really do help out the channel and help us to grow and reach a larger audience. So thank you for that. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So if the pen is mightier than the sword, what is an artisan crafted pencil worth? That's gotta be better than like a cannon.